Hey, everybody. Welcome. I'm Dr. Pat. I'm here with the most amazing, incredible Carrie Knutson joining me, Get Big Out Loud. And we're going to jump right to it today. This is really important. It's, it's so important and so timely. And first, let us apologize for the late start today. Um, yeah, one of those things that happens in media from time to time. But thank you all for hanging in there. Today, it's about finding inspiration. And this is, for me, one of the most difficult and ambiguous topics we have in the field of human potential. And today you're going to hear what the most amazing, first of all, incredible coach, speaker, um, somebody that knows what it means to get big out loud, counselor, storyteller, mother, rap artist, you know it, here we go. But inspiration is not the same as perspiration, but you need them both. Carrie, what do you think? What does inspiration mean to you? Welcome. Oh, wow. Thanks for the opening, Dr. Pat. I'm so excited to talk about inspiration today because I think it is so important to not just hope that you get inspired, especially when um, sometimes we seek external things to inspire us. And if things externally don't seem to be inspiring us, it's easy to be, or we lose hope, we don't get inspired. And so why I want to talk about inspiration today is that it's not something that you have to always look externally for. It's something that you can like light the fire of your own internal inspiration. Like I love the idea of to be inspired. I think there's something in us that is always lit. And sometimes you just need to fuel the fame, like, like blow a little bit on it to like watch it grow. And so I think inspiration too is, is anything right. That it's, and I call it that little, like <gasps> that little thing in you that lights up that it's kind of what it means to be alive. I feel like is what it means to be inspired sometimes, but when you know you're alive, because something takes your breath away or moves you or makes you feel a certain way. And that's what I want to talk about today. What, is, how do we, how do we find that inspiration? What does it look like? Yeah. I got to tell you what. Um, so yesterday, whether you're a football fan or not, um, whether you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan or not, when I am loving, this is what I'm loving from my age group. I am loving that the boundaries around who can be inspired and who can inspire others now. And this is the, eight, let's just talk about this for a minute because inspiration has no age. Inspiration can come from Amanda Gorman who did a beautiful another poem yesterday or Tom Brady who they're looking at like Benny, what is he like 42? They're like, 43. oh my God, he's 42. And he looks like he could play for 20 more years. But boy, inspiration is not something that it's attached to any aspect of us. It's almost as if it's like a little spiritual thing that knows no boundaries. Well, and I want to add to the, because you know, I know that we don't want, I don't know that much about football. Right. Remember the last time you asked me, like, don't ask me. No, 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 I'm not asking you, right? But, That's why but, I asked Benny. <laughs> no, but I wanted to tell you, I did watch the Super Bowl specifically for Amanda Gorman's poem. And then also one of the things that inspired me yesterday was um, Warren Snipe. He goes by Wawa. He interpreted. Yes. And he was truly, whether you know sign language or not. So I work in the deaf community and I know sign language. I'm fluent. So it meant something more to me. But we, does you don't need to understand sign language to feel what he put out in the world, like his energy, his, he stole the show. He really did. And he was li a living embodiment of inspiration in that moment, because I felt like he showed up ready to share his gifts. And I was ready to be inspired. Like it was truly uh, unique. So look him up too, if um, um, you haven't, his name is Warren Snipe. He goes by Wawa. And that was a moment from the Super Bowl for a non-sports watcher that just was like, Psh. but I love too, that you're like, okay, Amanda Gorman had a moment. Tom Brady for people did, right? For me, it was Wawa doing his thing. And it's all based around a sports experience, but look at the people mm -hmm. who showed up big. Yeah. The people who shared their gifts, the people who inspired us. You know, and that's why I want to bring it up because I'm not going to talk about the football game. We could spend a whole hour doing that. Um, but I do want to talk about and the inspiration from an event like the Super Bowl. Wawa was crazy. I mean, honestly, I wish they would have. They didn't show him immediately in the double, the split screen. I couldn't take my eyes off him. You know, um, 
this is really important for us. We're now moving into an age where even with us, we've been asked to get an interpreter. We've, we've been asked, are you going to, as you expand, are you going to get somebody to sign? And we're looking at it. We're looking at what that looks like. Um, we already do, um, uh, we already are doing text translations in a lot of our videos. But the inspiration today, I don't really quite know what snaps us a little bit to go from lethargic to inspire. Tell me about this. Do you have any experience with this? <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> Why would you and I talk about this if we have not been on the couch? <laughs> yes. Well, and even someone like you, Dr. Pat, look at your energy, look at your experience and look at what you're about through crest busting and everything you talk about. Like, have you been in those moments? Like for you, couch, <laughs> come from couch to inspiration, what does it take for you? Like in your own life, someone, especially your leader, your motivator, your thinker, like I think it happens to all of us. That's what I'm asked. What's your experience been with that? Have you had the similar, I don't know, feeling of, of like lack of inspiration to like getting there? Well, let's talk about the opposite of PTSD. Let's talk about what happens in the world of inspiration when we have images from our past that tap into our hearts, that tickle the inspiration muscle, I want to say. It's like a little tickle sometimes. Mm -hmm. Just seeing Amanda Gorman, just seeing her, just taking a look at her. We already go back to the first time we were introduced to her, but here she is again. And you're watching every movement of her lip, not to mention what she's wearing, but you're, you're watching it and you're hanging on every word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about the fact that inspiration has no boundaries? That inspiration is something that's available to all of us. But I will tell you, it does require some work on our end, right? To be open yes. to it. Oh my gosh. It? Yes, exactly. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. That's why I brought it up because you, sometimes we just wait on the couch, hoping to be inspired, right? Like the whole idea of let it come. And that's when people say like, I want to write my book, but you spend no time writing. Or I want to get better at playing piano, but I spend no time doing that. Right? Like sometimes the idea of there, there are many paths to inspiration, right? And we are. I think it's okay to seek it out or to put yourself in places where you can be open. I feel like inspiration actually lies more in your mind than in the experience because two people can see a very similar thing and not be inspired by it. Right. So I think it's how open you are, but you do have to like proverbially or, or realistically get off the couch of your life and be open to it. And sometimes I think it takes the shift in perspective and I often feel like at different times in my own life, I haven't been open to inspiration. I've been clouded by my thoughts, by my worries, by my fears, by being tired or exhausted. And so it's not like, like everyone's inspired all day, every day. I think real life can take its toll. But what I encourage you to think about is what, what do you benefit? What's the benefit from staying in that place, right? Like what is the opportunity if you get check on your mind and be like, what is, why am I closing down? Cause I think that closing down on inspiration also closes down on hope, right? It closes us down on opportunities. We might have to feel good. And sometimes we're so used to feeling bad. We don't even know. Yeah. We don't know how to access feeling good. Right. But I, I often think about one time when I, I was, my kids were so little and I was up at probably three in the morning and I thought I am the only person awake right now in the world, you know, and no one knows that. And I had gotten then back up, felt sad at three and then gotten back up at six for the next feeding and the sun was rising and I was getting bottles ready and I was cleaning them and out my window, I saw the sun rising, it, but it was through, um, power lines and some trees that were not had in bloom. And it wasn't like the most beautiful sunrise ever, but I thought, Oh, the sun, <laughs> is coming up. I, I'm going to make it today. You know, that just being open to even seeing the moment of like something else is rising and I can rise too. And I know it's like a, like kind of a silly moment, but that's finding those inspirational moments and taking them, right. Taking them is what's so important, being open to them, whatever it looks like for you, for some of us, the sunrise isn't, you know, we just see it, but for that moment, I needed it. I needed to be inspired by something. And I really felt it. And, and, you know, let's talk about this too, because, you know, there are some things we have to do in life. 
like I'm a business owner, you're a business owner. And, you know, one of our responsibilities or my responsibility is to take care of my team and take care of our business and our livelihood. And I've had to look through the lens of COVID-19 to look at what are the opportunities to get support, to get help, right? To get things that are available to us to continue to thrive and to continue to be a network. And paperwork has never been my inspiration. It has never been, I don't care what kind of form it is, it has always been a bit of a thing for me. And so for me and many others, we've had to step up to a new level of inspiration, especially when we are looking at doing things which we know will have an amazing outcome, but in the moment doesn't feel great. Yes. And that's the thing I want to hear you talk about as well, because how do we get past that moment of, oh my gosh, I have filled out this form for my bank like five times. I've been on hold for three and a half. And yet you have to do it. Yes. I'm doing that with a PPP loan and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, right? that's it. I'm, I'm right with you. But that's <laughs> to me, opportunity is waiting on the other side of those moments. And sometimes when you feel that resistance, I know for me, like you're talking about businesses and if you're a business owner out there, right? The vision of our businesses and how we show up for our business. A lot of times people don't see any of the back end end work. I call it the ugly work, right? The night staying up, the looking at the contracts, the figuring out the schedule, the paying the taxes, the researching, right? But they see a finished product. So like for me, when I go on stage, and maybe do like a keynote, right? That's 45 minutes or an hour. And nobody is thinking to themselves how many hours, not only preparing for that keynote, but how many hours of my life, like my education, my experience, my background that allow me to show up that way, right? Nobody, they just see the finished product and think, wow, right? But I also love the finished product because I like, wow, I did it. So sometimes when I'm in that space over here of like, I don't want to do any of this. I don't want to <laughs> do my forms and fill out schedules and figure out contracts and do hundred meetings and email back and figure out my PPP loan. Sometimes it helps to think about the outcome, right? I'm doing this so I can get that wow moment. Cause I want to be on that stage, right? I want to show up and sometimes I have to do this so I can get that. And I always, I equate it to sometimes like how relationships, we all love people, right? Like there's people that we love, right? But most people that we love, we can say, I've had a fight with that person. I've had a disagreement. I haven't always seen eye to eye. It's hard work to be in relationship, but it is also good work, right? So yeah. sometimes we confuse if it's hard, it doesn't feel good. And then I'm like, I'm not feeling inspired right now. So I want to get there. And we want a quick hit of inspiration sometimes, right? We are, we are not patient <laughs> with the process. So sometimes I do think for myself, I have um, pictures on my website of people at events. And sometimes I'll just look at those pictures to be like, what am I doing this for? What's my best space when I show up? I'm here. I'm going to do the work here so I can do that. You know, that's how that helps me sometimes when I'm in the mucky muck of like the things. I'm very much like you, Dr. Pat. Oh my God. You know what I'm really struck by? Let me just share this. There are three things that hit me as you were talking about this. I remember early on with the show and it was 2003, Benny, uh, and Benny and I go back that far. And, uh, and I remember we had some psychic on, I don't remember who it was, but I was talking about the vision. And even back then I had a vision for where we are today, but I didn't know what it was. I mean, I knew what general idea of what I wanted to create to really help bring positive media and create a better world. And I remembered getting this reading and I remember the person saying something like, yeah, don't worry about it. It will come to fruition in about nine years. And I'm like, I mean, I mean, it was like, uh, <laughs> nine years. I said, how nine months? No, nine years. And I thought, I could have got so hung up on that. And by the way, it did take nine years. Um, but it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that in between, because that nine-year vision was a gigantic vision. It had no foundation. Mm -hmm. I was just coming out of the gate, right? So I had yeah. to create the building blocks. 
But one of the things I want to ask you about, and this is so important, I'm going through this now with the PT and now the chiropractor. And whenever you take on a venture like the one I'm taking on, because what is my goal? What is my inspiration to going through these, this kind of surgery? I want to be able to play championship ping pong, table tennis. Mm -hmm. So you have to mm -hmm. trust in the process. And I want to ask you about this. When we are in the process, what have you learned to help people stay in that moment of inspiration to get like an inspiration hit? Yeah, totally. Well, and I think it's interesting because when you think about that inspiration hit, sometimes people try to attribute it exactly to the task at hand. And I think that's <laughs> Um, kind of too linear sometimes. Like sometimes we, again, we're waiting to be inspired, but the work we're doing is not inspiring because we, it's the practice and the buildup and the drudgery sometimes of that. Right. So sometimes I feel like we have to seek inspiration outside that moment, right. Outside those things. So for me, for example, I have a friend, I love the ocean, like love it. I feel some kind of I think I'm reincarnated as a whale or something. Like every time I see the ocean, I, I just feel like, so one of my friends who lives in Florida on her daily walk, she'll send me a picture of the beach or a video. Um, and sometimes I'll just play that video or look at that picture and be like, oh, because I'm inspired by some, by moving my mind in a different direction, right? Or when you think about inspired, like I'll listen to a really good song, like Indigo Girls, I could play any song of the Indigo Girls sing it at the top of my lungs and reset because somehow that music inspires me. So then when I'm going back to my other thing, so sometimes we don't look, don't look for inspiration on the same plane, right? Look for inspiration in your life. Like sit down and play something on the piano that feels good. That's another thing I do sometimes. I just play something on the piano or I'll look at my kids and decide intentionally to just look, observe what they're doing. And that inspires me sometimes to see what Lego thing they created, right? Or what game they're playing and feel inspired by youth and possibility. So I look more for the feelings around that I want to be inspired by. So then I can internalize it, even at the task at hand. And your, your other point about the goal, like sometimes the goal is great and people are motivated, but sometimes the goal is so far away. Oh boy. So we're so far away. So, right. So to me, when you're thinking about my big goal, Sometimes you have to be like, well, what are my smaller hits along the way to my big goal? I can keep it in sight, but sometimes it's hard to keep the energy up. And that's why when you're sitting there doing your PT or OT, whatever, sometimes in, if you be like, well, in three years, I'll get to be table tennis. I, you're waiting for your three years, right? That's not enough, right? So to me, being inspired it might be looking outside of your body or might be looking for in little improvements, right? Did my knee go back this far? Was I able to lift this many weights? Like break down the end goal into smaller chunks of achievement or inspiration or being proud of yourself, whatever that looks like, so that you can sustain yourself for the journey. Because sometimes our journeys are so long and um, the end goal isn't enough to keep us there. And I want to know from everybody out there, we're curious, do you have an inspiration moment you want to share on the show today? You know, something you found that inspired you, something that you just said, hmm, that's going to get me to the next rung of the ladder. Please feel free to give us a call or post on Facebook, 1-800-930-2819. Um, before we go to break, we're going to talk about inspiration more. Because sometimes when we say inspiration, people say, oh, I don't know how to do it. But every new piece of exercise equipment that has been developed in the yet last year has built in a complete system to keep people inspired slash motivated. All you need to do is watch the commercials. What do you get on the commercials? You get somebody riding this bicycle like a crazy person with somebody that's not even there talking to them, pushing them up a hill that actually doesn't exist. But you do it and you're inspired. But what inspires you? Some days it's just getting out of bed. Some days, it may be just straightening that knee. Other days, you got to have Diana Ross and the Supremes singing the song, My World is Empty Without You, Babe. Whatever it is, we're going to break it down, talk about it, pump it up, talk about our most inspirational things that we do or that we know others have done when we come back. But before we go, 
How do people find out about you? How do they work with you? How do they get themselves inspired by you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> they go to KnutsonSpeaks.com. That's K-N-U-T-S-O-N Speaks.com. And that's where you can contact me for, I do presentations and coaching. When we go back in to meeting again, you can see my one woman show. Um, that I, and I, one of my tags, my tagline is educate, train, inspire. So I'm big into inspire and that idea of how, and I do it through connecting with, with whether it's coaching or trainings, that is so important to me, leave people inspired and what that means. And I'll talk when we come back about the difference in my mind between being motivated and being inspired. Exactly. And for, uh, I think it was MK that asked the question, Dr. Pat, how did you learn to tie that tie? Oh, there's a special name for it. Not that special, knot on the tie. YouTube. Let's take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back with the show. City limit was singing. Thanks, Benny. That's all I need is a hit of my girls there. That's great. Oh my God. Are we having so much fun? First of all, before we get rolling, one more time, how do people find out about you? Um, how do they hire you to speak, but also how do they work with you? Because working with you is going to get people off, move the dial. How do they do that? Sure. You find me, my name is Carrie Knudsen and you find me at Knudsen Speaks, K-N-U-T-S-O-N speaks.com. And that's where you get in touch with me. And one of the things I, I first only offered presentations as a way to speak. I say that I take psychology off the couch and bring it to people. That's my tag. That's my thing that I say. But then people wanted to contact me for coaching because they're like, well, I want emotional intelligence in my own life. I want to understand how psychology can benefit me. I want to be inspired. And that's why my tagline, educate, train, inspire, led me to do some more coaching with people because it really helps when you have some individual time to think about that and how you want to show up right? And like what keeps us from being inspired. So that's, that's one of the ways I work with people that's been really gratifying is to do individual coaching work, as well as big presentations, or small ones too, to any number of groups. So that's how I work. Uh, so Mark and I have been asked to write an article, this is where we need your coaching. I, I need your coaching in a lot of areas. But you also during the break, you also help me do something I'm not doing. And I will make that change. But we've been asked to write an article on each of us on manifestation. And Mark and I do a show called The Psychic and the Doc at some very later, later hour in the night. And as we're doing this show, it's great. Um, but people are kind of noticing. And so the name I, I, that people call me, like you're a closet rapist, right? That's you, you do like closet rap, like, right? I do my closet rap artistry. Yeah. That's it. Her friends and family and few unfortunate people have to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, we got to get her to do some. Yeah. Right. Um, I'll have to send you. You'll a have clip. to do it. You'll, you'll have to send us a clip so we can play it. But or just let we can do a freestyle one day. Freestyle one oh. day. I know. All right. I'll, I'll tell you put you on up. the spot. Work. <laughs> That'd be okay. awesome. Actually, that's when I do my yeah. best work. The last time I did one, at, I just want to tell you my best riff at a wedding. One time I got put on the spot at a wedding and the bride's name was Cecilia. And my riff was Cecilia, I feel ya in my ha, 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 ha. And I did this whole like thing with Cecilia, which is hard to rhyme to people. So yeah. I'm, I, I'll work on that for you guys. I'll be ready for you someday. Transformation <laughs> Talk Radio Network. Well, we had a better, we had a better opportunity. And honestly, Benny, I have never okay. been able to talk to the poet since the opportunity. I had a poet on. She did a great, great, great book on poetry. But one of the po one of the po poems was Poe as a Ho. I don't know if she's still talking to me after that thing we did. But let's talk, let's get back to inspiration because here we are. Yes. I have said a million times. We are living in extraordinary times and we are seeing people become uber extraordinary in their everyday lives. I have such a new sense of humanity today. I have such a inspired sense of humanity today. Um, at some level I do and at other levels, I have some disappointments, right? Yes. I yes. have some disappointments. But how do we not go to the disappointments for ourselves? See, that's the, that's a little hook right there. So if I am the maker of my own disappointment, isn't inspiration 
the tool to move from disappointment to anointment. Whoa, that was your own rap right there. <laughs> wow, disappointment to anointment. All right, I'm going to work with that one. I'll put that in my next rap. Oh my God. But I like, so I like where you're going with it. The idea of, and I think inspiration to me is not the fix all. Like if I get inspired, then I'll be able to do this. It's the turning point. It's the hope. Because I think when we're down in it, it's the thing that gets us out of it is having hope that maybe it could be different, right? Or feeling a different way about our circumstance or about the world or about the person we just had the argument with or about the thing we're sad about, right? The, I, the turning point for me, inspiration offers hope because there's a little change in your mind that says, what is possible? Because I'm starting to feel different. Feelings first, action second. And I always say like, you can't think of feeling. So if you're like mad or upset or depressed and someone says, well, you shouldn't be, or you just think this way, that'd be like, oh, I feel what I feel. So when you're in those moments of feeling not good, that's why I think it's important because motivation is different to me than inspiration. So in the not good moments, if you're like, you can do it. Come on, Dr. Pat, I believe in you. Go after your dreams, like cheer you on. Like, you know, like all the things that like sometimes work in the moment. Um, and I have to say <laughs> I'm bad, but when sometimes people say to me, I'm a motivational speaker, I say, I am absolutely not a motivational speaker. <laughs> I am not. Because I don't like that. Because you know, when someone tells me they're a motivational speaker, if someone tells me that this is the first thing I do, I find my body language closing up and I do this and I, in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, motivate me. Oh, oh my God. You're like, okay. So, right. I am known as the street smart spiritualist. Really? That, that came to, that's what people call. And I'm telling you right there, that was super street smart position. I love it. You know, why? Why? Why are we like that? But first, uh, Roberto, thank you so much from Guatemala. Beautiful. Yes, we are here to inspire you. Thank you for your Facebook comment. Thank you so much for even listening. Um, I often think about what gets me fired up. But I'm also human. And this is what I've said to the listeners for a long time now. You've seen me cry. You've seen me laugh. And you keep asking me about this tie and let me explain it. It is a two color, it is really two ties, just getting everybody to know it is really black and red, there you go. Um, but on our down days, we get to decide how down we are going to go and how long we gonna go there. Sure. And this is the thing I wanna talk to you about, right? Tell us how we go about this, because I love speaking stories. I am not good at writing stories, but if I speak them and, and transcribe them, I'm okay. How can we change our story, Carrie? Because, you know, there's a lot of us, we got some like, I don't know, I can't say cuss word, but we got some stuff that we bring it forward. How do you help people change sure. the story? Oh, I love that. And storytelling is one of the things I do. That's why I have a storytelling show. I believe in the power of stories and telling our own stories. But the thing that you mentioned that I want to talk about first is like when we're so down, like how, how do we get out? How do we do that? Sometimes we rely, I think, too much on ourselves, right? We expect that I should be able to pull myself out of this. I should just change my mind, right? And sometimes I feel like we have to acknowledge like we're just human. Right? We've been through disappointments, we have losses, and sometimes we don't let ourselves sit in that space for long enough to acknowledge it. And then sometimes it goes on so long that we think we get we should get ourselves out of it. And here's my therapy self-talking, right? As a therapist, when I work with people, um, a lot of times they're like, I I feel that like I like to be on the couch and say, I'm here because I have a problem. I always say, you know what? If you could have figured it out on your own, you would have. There are plenty of things you figure out on your own. Right. And sometimes we need an external person to help. Like you can't do your PT on your own because you're not an expert in PT. Right. You don't know physical therapy. So you go to someone. Right. Right. For me, when I go to my chiropractor, I need someone else to adjust me. I cannot adjust myself. Right. And so when we go talk to other people like a therapist or, or someone who can help us we go, we, we reach out of ourselves. Right. And so part of me, like that's the like getting 
making movement. But that's why I think inspiration sometimes lies. It's an internal flame in us, but sometimes it needs to be blown on. Is it poetry, art, music, riding your bike, looking up at the sky, studying something totally interesting, right? Being outside yourself. Is it something that stops you from like doing this <laughs> coming inward and, and pushes you out? And sometimes it's other people. Sometimes it's situations. Sometimes it's a moment of clarity. Sometimes it's a passage from a book or a word, right? So the whole idea of we should be 100% responsible for our inspiration to me, misses the point of inspiration. It has to be outside yourself. It has to be something where you observe the world or people or situations. And you have you don't actually have to have anything to do with them. And I'm, I'm gonna connect this to storytelling in a minute because there's someone who inspires me so much. Ernest Shackleton is an explorer. And if any of my friends are listening, they're rolling their eyes right now because I basically have a crush on Ernest Shackleton. He was an explorer who lived in the 1900s and I have in explored Antarctica, got struck there for two years, all this stuff happened. I did not want to go be in a cold place. I do not want to be an, an Antarctic explorer. I have no desire to learn how to run a big boat and deal with 22 other men, but he has story. Sometimes I go back in, and so in parts of my life when I'm struggling, sometimes I'll, I'll think about Shackleton's story and the story of how he survived almost two years in, in Antarctica with a, with a boat that busted with 22 men that needed him to save them, essentially. I'll think about that story. And I talk about it in a lot of my speeches too, because it just, his story, just thinking about it, lights something in me up, right? And we have nothing to do with each other. It has nothing to exactly. do with his job, right? Yeah. So sometimes I feel like remembering inspiration comes from the inside out and you have to sometimes allow yourself to be inspired by the other, by the situation, by the view, by your spiritual belief, by something someone said, by a book, a poem, a bike ride, right? It can come from many different places. I just want to know from everybody out there, let's give you the inspiration challenge for today, because it's one of those things that uh, Carrie and I prepared for the show today. And what that means is, of course, we do things in our everyday life to prepare for life. And we, you know, this, what you're hearing from Carrie right now, these are some of the things she does. These are some of the things she's reminded of. And for those of you out there, are you ready to call inspiration in? Just like Roberto did. Are you ready to call it in? Because that is the first step. It is the opening for that. Are you ready to call it in and see what shows up? But even more purposefully, what can you put in front of you to inspire you? Okay, so what Carrie said to me during the break was, oh, you're doing this because you want to play ping pong or table tennis rather. And I said, yeah, all my buddies are playing again. And so you want to do this so you can do that. And then she reminded me that my table is not down. It's in the other room, but it's not down. You know, you have to put the table down. It's a big table and there's room for it. It's not down and the robot's not on it. So what am I doing to make that happen? But more importantly, we each have stories, right? We each have people. And at different points in time in our life, Shackleton, my God, for me, it was Viktor Frankl. Uh, and people yes, say to me, search for meaning is, beautiful. oh my God, people are like, are you going to do a show on that? And I think we're going to do a whole series on the book. Oh, can I be part of that? Yeah, That's wouldn't you love amazing. to? And then my friend said to me the other day, I went and got that book, Pat my God, it is like so depressing. And I'm like, okay, yeah, the situation is, but that, did you finish reading the book? It is one of those things. And I think about the worst days in my life. And I think about what he did and how he did it. And I ask myself, do I have the same juju that he's got? Do I have the same mojo? that this man in a concentration camp had. Because some days, Carrie, I don't know that I do. You know what I mean? Yes, well, and that's why seeking it outward. And for those of you who don't know, Viktor Frankl was a psychiatrist who was in the concentration camp and wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And one of his most beautiful 
um, to me quotes from the book is in between our thinking and doing is a moment as a pause. And we have a choice based on how we choose to think and true. The situation was overwhelming and depressing. And for him to write a book about our search for meaning, that's why I feel like inspiration is connected to what gives our lives meaning, right? What's the purpose. And to me, like you just saying his name lights up something for me because again, and that's an external motivator, right? To be like, doing something that inspires me, saying his name, saying Shackleton, right? Saying Indigo Girls, whatever, even thinking about that. <laughs> indigo. Right? I'm going to say Indigo Girls. Indigo and, go Girls. Say it. And even seeing my friend, um, Roberto from Guatemala, a friend from so many years ago on this call, wow. I feel inspired by the memory of our friendship and like that he's out there in the world, right? So knowing he's listening, that means so much to me, Mario. And um, so just, just knowing to me, like to, to your point, when you're saying, where is my table up or down? If your table's down, the inspiration that you're going to play again is so much closer than the idea in your head that maybe you'll play again, right? And sometimes when you're down in the dumps, you need an external motivator. If that's a picture, if that's an action, if it's holding your ping pong, right? Like the, 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 what is the paddle? The bat. The bat. Yeah. Yeah. The, bat. the paddle yeah, bat. I know what yeah. said, the bat. Yeah. And just feeling that again and feeling the power of that. Right. Sometimes people use touchstones for things. Like sometimes when I need to be strong, my daughter gave me <laughs> this fox. It's a little tiny fox. It's this plastic fox. One time before I was going to my first big event for a thousand people, and I was so nervous. It was the first time I'd spoken to such a big group. And she said, Bob, this fox has got it. It's going to help you do great today. And like, and she was like, I just know you're going to speak to those people and they're going to love you. And just remember this fox is there and I'm there and daddy. And, and she just made this beautiful speech to me. And I put that fox in my pocket and I did. I was like, I'm inspired to do this work. Cause you know what? I'm inspiring others. Cause I want to see my daughter she was inspired by what I was doing. And when I felt scared, she gave me strength, right? So I could go do it. And that little fox is a little plastic thing to other people. But to me, it's the most beautiful, sweet yeah. memory that inspires me. Because now that the audience has gotten bigger and the stakes have gotten higher, I always think, though, it doesn't change when you get scared. It doesn't change when you're not inspired. And it doesn't change like, oh, I've made it. In some way, there's always more to make, right? So sometimes when I'm having those moments of feeling small and scared... I do look at that little fox, right? And I yeah. do remember my first time on a big stage and I do elicit a feeling. And the point I want to make today too is like, I think you have to let inspiration find you as much as you seek it out, right? Yeah. You have to yes. be open to that. Yes. And I want to, let's talk to that issue because this, what you just said right there, that is like a little turnkey for me. That is so important. If our energy, I don't know how else to say it, Carrie, you don't have to jump in. If our energy, right, is closed, even if we say, I want to be inspired, I want to be inspired, and we're really not open for what shows up because we want to be inspired only if the three planets align again, Jupiter, Saturn, I don't know, whatever they are. And that's not going to happen for like 400 years. So don't wait for that one. Um, tell me what open to inspiration is like, because you just said something so key, right? I mean, I have a laughing dog. Next time you're on, I'm going to bring on the laughing dog. And we could, I could tell you, I, Linda goes nuts. Every time I pull out the laughing dog, she's like, I'm going to take that dog and I'm going to hide it and I'm going to pull <laughs> the batteries out. But it's different things for different people. But talk about this one thing, this open to inspiration part. Yes, I think that is the key to finding it is letting it find you again. And that's all mindset, right? It's all like, I need to be open. And it my inspirational journey doesn't have to look like yours, right? Some things simply think about the kind of music in the world. Sometimes music completely irritates me and makes me feel angry or frustrated or like too much. And other time music is a complete vehicle for inspiration, right? So to me saying something like music, what kind and what venue and how, right? Are you open to also knowing yourself to know, like to me, sports has never been a thing that I go to, right? But plenty of people love sports for inspiration. They look at stories and they think about it. And who am I to say that's not a good way to be inspired, right? 
right? And, but we have to ask ourselves to me, right? In my life, how do I start to be open in my own environment to looking at what inspires me and then <laughs> connecting to it? Right. And so that means sometimes I think like, well, look at your bookshelf. What kind of books are you interested in? Like, what are the books that you're reading that inspire you? What kind of quotes do you like to write down? What kind of music sets a tone for like how you want to show up that day? Right. And, and it, the, what could kind of, I just, sometimes you don't need to turn the dial. People need to like change hundred percent. I'm like, what could turn the dial just enough to get you to the next thing you need to do, right? To, to inspire you enough maybe to make a different decision or to move the dial forward or move your day forward in a little bit. Sometimes I always laugh when people say, this is gonna change my life or I wanna change my life. And I'm like, man, you don't wanna change your whole life. You wouldn't even recognize it. Let's just do a little, <laughs> let's just do a little bit at a time. Your life isn't that bad either, right? There's so many things in it if you appreciated it. And I often think, you know, when people say you don't know what you got till it's gone, like sometimes like when you used to have your knee working and you could take it for granted, it was a lot easier not to appreciate. And sometimes the inspiration is like, hey, look at how much I've been improving with my knee, right? And sometimes the inspiration is maybe watching other people play the sport you love or holding on to that bat, right? Or thinking about the day you're going to get there. But maybe it's not nothing to do with table mm -hmm. tennis. And maybe it's in other parts of your life that you can access right now, right? So if, if not being able to do that, bringing you down, know yourself enough to be like, I need to look for inspiration in other areas because this can't happen for me right now, right? But I can still, the sunrise is always available, I say, right? And the ocean's not going anywhere. And to me, the music I love, the books, poetry, art, being outside, sometimes I remember one time I just opened my door because it was raining and I just smelled the air in the rainstorm because it felt so powerful for me. And I took a few breaths and I'm like, oh, nature is crazy amazing. Right? And I just opened my door for a minute, right? So it doesn't have to cost money or take me a trip or like cost you a bazillion dollars. I do think you have to be the idea of like, let inspiration find you as much as you seek it out. That has to do with your mind and being willing to be open. I don't know if you stayed through the game last night and I, we only have a few minutes left, but if you stay through the game, at least a half time. And Jessica and I finally convinced Linda that the weekend is not a misspelling. That is the way he spells his name. It's not really like the weekend, it's like, that's the way he spells his name, The Weeknd. <laughs> whether you watched it or not, whether you liked it or not, they could have Benny done a better job with the sound on it. Something through the roof happened with that performance. There have been many Super Bowl performances. I don't care, really top of the charts. But something extraordinary with that performance that got people to talk about it, that got people to look at it, that asked themselves, why are all those people on the field? Why are they dressed in red? Why are they wearing masks? Some people were completely inspired by the multimedia effect of it. Some people never heard of The weekend and now heard of it now. But what I hear you saying is, whether it's The weekend or The Weekday, this is a time for all of us to be open to what's being put in front of us to inspire us, isn't it? And I want to thank you for today, Carrie. Thank you for bringing this really to a place where all of us can have access to it. What's your personal message and how do we find out more about you? Everything you're doing, you are an inspiration. Thank you. And if someone ever says that to me, I always feel so much pride because that is my goal because I think inspiration lasts longer than motivation and inspiration, you can tap into that long after motivation is gone. Motivation is a short-term prospect that is incredibly helpful, but inspiration is that fire, right? That's there yeah. that needs to be blown on, right? That needs a little bit of attention. And my message is don't forget that you already have it inside you, right? And blow on that a bit and open your mind up to what's possible in all kinds of areas of your life. Not necessarily what you're trying to work on, but like, how can you be inspired because you're alive in this world? And it is amazing. Even with all the hardships, even it's not being naive to that. It's being open 
to looking, there's a quote that I love that I got it in a um, fortune cookie one time that said, um, better to be an optimist and proven right than a pessimist and proven wrong, right? <laughs> Is that right? There's like a pest of, yes, an optimist and proven right than a pessimist and proven wrong. And I think like, that's the optimist side. Like, why not seek it out? Why you were not made to suffer, right? And, and finding inspiration in everyday life, in your life, right? Not only serves your higher good, but what you're trying to do in this world and it ends up serving others, right? So that's why I think staying inspired helps all of us. And I think yeah. that's why it's important to talk about it. Oh my God, thank you so much for today. Let's have your website. Let's know how people can work with you, all of the above. And thank you for today. Sure. So you can go to KnutsonSpeaks.com. I'm Carrie Knutson. You can contact me through there. You can see my presentations. I'm doing all my presentations virtually now, and that's very exciting. And I'm doing coaching virtually now too, which is great. And the I'm also putting out a newsletter called Of All Things Insights and Inspiration. <laughs> And I put that out every month with a topic and then we talk about it on this radio show. So it's really good connection. If you want more written work from me, you can sign up on my website for that. Um, right now it says EQ Minute, but I'm changing my website next month to reflect some things that I've been inspired about and to be open to the changes I'm ready to make. So that's how you can reach out to me. And as always, thank you, Dr. Pat, for the time and the platform to do this work. Uh, absolutely. And Jacob, thank you so much. He has given us a clarification, which says he used to spell that to avoid the weekend used to spell that to avoid copyright with another Canadian band named the weekend E N D as opposed to the weekend week N D. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what keeps me young. <laughs> Gary Knutson, Dr. Pat short break. We'll be right back.